Okay, welcome back to the channel. Now we've got to do some factorizing today. So whenever you've got coefficients of x squared that are not one, people start finding it a bit difficult. So what on, what on earth do we do? Now to factorize these, here's one method you could use. The very first thing you need to do is, we'll start by labeling these A, B, and C. So A is just a coefficient of the x squared, B is a coefficient of the x, and C is the constant term on the end. So A equals 6, B equals minus 7, and C equals minus 5. What do we do? We take A and we multiply it by C. Okay, so that times that. So we'll just write this here, A times C, which is minus 30. And so what we need to do now is start thinking of two numbers that will multiply to minus 30, but add together to still give you minus seven, so B. And so what's that gonna be? I've gotta start thinking of some numbers. Um, well, 10 times three is 30. So I think we'll need to have a minus 10 and a positive three, because minus 10 plus three will also give me minus seven. So there we go. There's the two numbers that we use. So what we need to do now is rewrite our quadratic. So we're gonna have it as six X squared. But now, instead of writing minus seven X, what I do is use the two numbers um, that I came up with. So I write minus 10 X and then plus three X and then minus five. Next thing to do is start factorizing this part here. So what's the most you can take out of six X squared minus 10 X? I think that's two X. And so we'll be left with three X minus five. And over here, well, if we're factorizing this, it doesn't look like there's much you can take out. So what we'll do is just write plus one. Because if you take one out of there, this stays exactly the same. So three X minus five. And now what we can see is the two brackets are the same. So that's good. It means we've done this correctly. We factorize those two brackets out on the outside. So we have X minus five. And then what's left over is two X plus one, and that's gonna be our second bracket. So that's that one factorized. We do exactly the same thing for this one. So we start by writing A, B, and C. So for this one, A is equal to 12, B is equal to minus five, C is equal to minus two. Next thing, multiply A and C together. That's 12 times minus two, that's minus 24. And so this time what we need is two numbers. That's going to times together to minus 24. So the same two numbers must add to minus 5 because that's what B was. So this, this time is going to be, I think, minus 8 and 3. Minus 8 and 3. Minus 8 plus 3 minus 5. Okay, that's good. And now we rewrite the quadratic. So 12x squared. Now we start using these numbers. Minus 8x plus 3x. And then minus 2 on the end. Now, factorize out the first two terms there. I think the most you can take out of there is 4x. So we'll have, uh, what's this, 3x minus 2. Uh -huh. And then again, from this part, the most you can take out from there is just 1. So we write plus 1. And then 3x minus 2. Now the brackets are the same. So we can write 3x minus 2. And then 4x plus 1 that's what was left over. Now you'll notice this time I put here equals to zero because what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna solve it. So we set it equal to zero. Now to solve this quadratic, what you need to do is take each factor and equal it to zero. So I like to do this. So 3x minus two is equal to zero. And then 4x plus one equals zero. Send this minus two over, so 3x is equal to two. That means x is equal to two thirds. Same over here, take the one over. So four x equals minus one, x is equal to minus a quarter. And there you go, you solved um, your quadratic. So if you take this, plug it back into x, hit equals on your calculator, it should come out as zero. So you can go and try that for yourself. Now let's just factorize the last one. And again, I put it equal to zero because we're gonna go and solve it. So we've got a, b, and c, a is equal to four, 
b is equal to minus 16 and c is equal to 15. So multiply a and c together, a times c is 60, isn't it? And then we need two numbers that are going to multiply to give me 60, but the same two numbers must add to give me negative 16. Okay, so what's that going to be? Uh, 3 and 20, 6 and 5 and 12, no, 6 and 10. Yeah, 6 and 10. Okay, so it's going to be minus 6 and minus 10. There you go, minus 6 and minus 10. That works, perfect. So then let's go and rewrite this. So we'll have my, uh, 4x squared minus 6x minus 10x plus 15. Put that equal to zero. And then factorize out the first two terms. The most we can take out of there is 2x. And then we'll have 2x minus 3. Now factorizing this here, I'm going to take out minus 5 from there. So if I had minus 5 out of there, this would leave me with 2x and then minus 3. There we go. So my brackets match up. This is great. Pull these two brackets out. You have 2x minus 3. And then what's left over? 2x minus 5. And there you go. That's equal to 0. And now to solve it, take each of your factors and equal them to 0. So you've got 2x minus 3 is 0. 2x minus 5 equals 0. So this one, send the minus 3 over. So you have 2x is equal to 3, and then x is equal to 3 over 2. Do the same with the next one. So you'd have 2x is equal to 5, and then x is equal to 5 over 2. And there it is. So again, you could take any of these x values, sub it into your original um, equation up here, and then hit equals, it should come out as 0. And that's how you can check if it's good or not. Right, there we go. That's how you factorize quadratics where the coefficient of the x squared is bigger than 1.